listen, guys, I know not, not all of you are theologians, but here's the deal about Job. Job is one of the first books ever written, ever, ever, ever in the world. The book of Job. Got that? This is one of the first books ever written, and it's a book of poetry. People heard from God. This is pre-Mosaic law. Okay? This is before Moses talked to God, you know, on the mountain, before the Ten Commandments. This is pre-Abrahamic covenant. This is long, long, long ago. This is probably, I believe, shortly after the flood. That's when I believe this probably took place. And either Moses wrote this or Job wrote this. And it's a book of poetry, and it's, it's fantastic. And it says, Then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind. Here we go. Who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorant words? Brace yourself like a man, because I have some questions for you, and you must answer them. God comes to you. You're going through a really bad time in your life. Relationships, south. Resources, because your relationship went south, the other half took all the money. She got the gold mine, and I got the shaft. Yeah, that's it. Okay. I, uh, there's some country singers in our church, and they quickly reminded me of that. She got the gold mine. I got the shaft. So you got the shaft, and you're walking around like this. Anyways, uh, uh, broke. And you are now, or whatever has happened, you're going, God, you don't know a thing. Because most of the time, when things go south in your life, you go, so what, what's up, God? What, what really happened? Now, you guys hear me say this all the time, God is God and we are not. All the wisdom that Bildad, Eliphaz, and Zophar thought they had, and all the wisdom that Job thought he had, God looks at this, looks at Job and says, Job, I got a few questions for you. Let's see how sharp you are. Let's see if you are as sharp as you think you are. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Hey, Job, where were you when I spoke this universe into existence? Really, you think I'm that stupid? Can you believe this is God speaking to Job? Job, do you think I'm that foolish? That I don't know what's going on? Where were you when I spoke the world into existence? Tell me, like this, tell me if you know so much. Who determines its dimensions and stretched out the surveying lines? What supports its foundation and who lays its cornerstones? As the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. Who kept the sea inside the boundaries as it burst from the womb and as I clothed it with clouds and wrapped it in thick darkness? For I locked it behind barred gates limiting its shores. I said, this far and no farther will you come. Here your proud waters must stop. Have you ever commanded the morning to appear and caused the dawn to rise in the east? Have you ever made daylight spread to the ends of the earth to bring an end to the night's wickedness? As the light approaches, the earth takes shape like clay pressed beneath a seal. It is robbed, it is, excuse me, robed in brilliant colors. The light distur dis disturbs the wicked and stops the arm that it raised in violence. Have you explored the springs from which the sea comes? Have you explored their depths? Do you know where the gates of death are located? Have you seen the gates of utter gloom? Do you realize the exalted of the earth? Tell me about it if you know. Where does light come from? Where does darkness go? Can you take each to its home? Do you know how to get there? But of course you know all this, for you were born before it was all created. And you are so very experienced. You guys know any of those questions? One of my favorite, thank you, one of my favorite uh, uh, shows is Discovery. And I love, as 
you know, people with sharp minds, sharper than mine, try to discover everything about creation. And they got some really unbelievable theories, but they, they try. You know, the best scientists can come up with is they go, it just started. And we don't know how. And they go, well, can you make something from nothing, or is there got to be something there to, not, you know, they have all kinds of questions. It, it's amazing that almost 3,000 years ago, God looks at Job and says, hey, Job, were you there when I created the universe? Were you there when I said, water, you stop here? Were you there when I said, sun, come up, sun go down sun come up sun go down sun come up sun go down sun come up and i think it is so cool what i you know it, it just does it and if it doesn't do it we're in some serious trouble i love that i love that about god i love listening to years ago i heard this speaker his name is robbie zachariah you can look him up on the web and uh uh he debates He's an apologist and he talks about Christianity and he talks about the character of God. And one thing that's really cool about the character of God is the rising of the sun and, and the setting of the sun. And he depicted it of a grandchild that he had. And I can depict it as when I had my first child, which was Matthew, my son. And when he was a little boy, I used to throw him up in the air. And he'd come down and he'd laugh and he'd smile at me. And then when he got to talk, he'd say, do it again. And so I'd throw him up again. And then he'd say, do it again. And he would say, do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again, till my arms would fall off. And he never quit enjoying it. Do it again. And I'm sure if you have kids, there's always something that they're like, let's do it again. Let's do it again. And God has embedded his image on all of us. Who else is going to come up with this idea? The sun comes up, the sun goes down, the sun comes up, the sun goes down. And God's going, do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. It is so good. It is so routine. And God loved it, and he smiles, and it gives, us, and it gives you and I life. And so we have one of these first generations, they believed in God. They didn't know everything to know everything about God. They thought for sure when something bad happened in their lives that, oh man, God's punishing them. And God is allowing them to know for the very first time, no, I'm in control of everything. The good, the bad, I know it all. And you know nothing. Do you know where water came from? I do, I made it. Do you know where hell is? You don't, but I do. Turn to uh, chapter 42. This is what God thinks about the wise friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. I kind of like the names, though. You know what I'm saying? Eliphaz, Zophar. That eh, build that sounds like it should be in a children's book, don't you think? Here we go. It says, After the Lord had finished speaking to Job, he said to Eliphaz the Temanite, I am angry with you and your two friends, for you have not spoken accurately about me as my servant Job has. So, take seven bulls and seven rams and go to my servant Job and offer a burnt offering for yourselves. My servant Job will pray for you. And I will accept his prayer on your behalf. I will not treat you as you deserve. For you have not spoken accurately about me, as my servant Job has. So Eliphaz the Temite, Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Namathite did as the Lord commanded them. And the Lord accepted Job's prayer. His three buddies, who, for you guys that have written it, Job is always like, really, you guys think you're that smart? where we were going to go today in chapter 14 through 17. Job's like, if you guys are what compassion is supposed to look like, I don't want any. You know what I'm saying? 
That's that's what he's. If, if you're supposed to be compassionate, just hit me in the head and walk away. So they were wrong. I mean, even though you read this and they're they're talking so eloquently about God and everything that they know and they're so wise. And I love when Job said, "Oh my God, when you guys die, wisdom's going to die with you." You know what? A, Good, smart Alec remark. You can remember that for a professor in college one day. Anyways, here's the deal. One time Job, says that Job talks about death. And for you guys that have heard, he talks about death. And he doesn't understand death. He says, I want to hide in the grave. And he's like, because this is pre-Christ, this is pre-Abrahamic covenant. He's like, what happens when we die? Where do we go? Do we just hang out? We're asleep. What goes on? And he's like, man, if you can hide me in the grave, then maybe later on I can stand before you and we can figure this out, God. You guys, as, as you become more in tune to the, the scriptures, he goes on, and, and here it's like, because at one, at one point in the book of Job, Job says, I wish I had an advocate. I wish I had someone that stood in my place to explain to me, to, you know, so they can talk to God for me. And of course, 3,000 more years later, we 2,000 we know of Christ. But Job prays to God and, and they're forgiven. Isn't that really cool? Because how many of you guys get mad at friends and you're still mad at your friend? Well, they're not your friend, all right. But they're your friend, but you're mad at them. How, you guys ever got mad at a friend? I'm so glad we got kids in here, Yes. Because adults are like, well, maybe they're sitting over there. <laughs> Don't really want to talk to them. You, you guys, I want you, before we wrap this up, picture this. Job is physically disfigured. disfigured. He stinks of death. He reeks of death. He has flesh that has died that he scrapes. He's crying. Everybody knew Job because Job was a successful. Even then, he was, they, they knew what success was. He had, he had like a fleet of camels. So he had like the good camels. Lots of them, double humpers. He could, and, and, he, and, he, and he had trade routes. He was a trucker. He traded his grain all over the known land. He didn't need a credit card. His name carried the weight. It's Job. Oh, yeah, no problem. Whatever you need, take it. He had condos everywhere. Enemies didn't even bother with him because they, they knew they would lose. Everybody knew Job. And when Job took a hit they're like wow what what's up what what now and Job he just said God why he didn't curse God he didn't give God the finger he didn't run he just is like, what? 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 And God in a few chapters before this is Job. I'm God. You're not. I got you. I got you in your good times. And this is the hardest thing to, to, to grasp, to put into your soul, to rely on. I got you in your good times, and I got you in your bad times. You know, when I have friends, when folks here are going through terrible times, a wife is leaving you, a husband is leaving you, kids have gone south, resources dried up, you lost a job, whatever it is, and sometimes it's because of your own foolishness, sometimes it's not, and you go, what do I do? And I'm not a cliche pastor, 
but I, 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 my, my only truth that I know of is only God knows your tomorrows, so hold on to God. Hold on to Jesus. He's the only one that knows what's going to happen. You don't, but he does. And that's what Job did. He hung on to God. Now, I got to admit this. When you hold on to God and you do what God wants you to do, he blesses you like you can't believe. Band, why don't you guys come up and get ready, and I'm going to read this as they're coming up. This is, this is... This is the second half of Job's life. Listen to this. When Job prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as before. Then all his brothers and sisters and former friends came and feasted with him in his home. And they consoled him and comforted him because of all of the trials the Lord had brought against him. And each of them brought him a gift of money and a gold ring. So listen to this. this. I love when he gives us numbers because we can understand numbers. Right? We can understand numbers. We, we, don't, we don't often understand the unseen blessings that we have. I talked to a young lady who she decided to give for the first time in a year. And we went to lunch and she said, Pastor Ken, here's the deal. I'm giving 10%, but I don't, my, my bank account isn't going up. Matter of fact, it kind of went down. We're kind of barely making it. And I, I thought when I give like this, you know, I was going to get rich. You know, I was waiting for the press down, shaking together, running over, and I don't know what happened. And all I could say to her is, I, and I love this young lady, I said, I said, listen, here's the deal. Do you know what God has kept you from? Do you know what your guardian angels have protected you from? Do we know the unseen? We don't, do we? But do we measure the unseen? No. No, don't, don't look at me and go, oh, yeah, I know, yeah. I saw some demon chasing me the other day, and I was in, boy, my archangel came down, hit him in the head, and went rolling down into the river, and I was good. No. We're two-dimensional, and we're not three-dimensional. So I love when God tells him this. You obey me, you will be blessed. Here's the numbers. Everybody know Job was loaded. Job was loaded. And this is what happens. So the Lord blows, blessed Job in the second half of his life even more than in the beginning. And you got to know it comes from God. All our blessings come from, everything is God's anyways. It all comes from God. Here, this is what he says. For now, for now he had, for now he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 teams of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. He also gave Job seven more sons and three more daughters. He named his first daughter I think it's Jemima. I'm thinking of syrup instantly. <laughs> Aunt Jemima, I didn't know she was in the Bible. Did you? I mean, you grew up in Chicago. I, I didn't even know that you're eating maple syrup came from trees. I thought it came from Aunt Jemima. So there we go. Aunt Jemima has made the Bible. Daughter Jemima, the second Keziah, and the third Karen. Yeah, have a punch. Ha-ba-ba, whatever. In all the land, no women were as lovely as the daughters of Job, and their father put them in all his will along with their brothers. Job lived 140 years after that, living to see four generations of his children in Ganshul. Then he died, an old man, and lived a long, really It could have been a different ending, couldn't have been. Job could have said, God, you, bad word. Right? He didn't have to remain faithful, did he? But he does. You know, your faithfulness, the way you know God, it matters. It matters to your family matters to your friends and isn't it cool that Job partied like a rock star I mean he did he made it and he goes okay we're having a party he, he doesn't go like oh can you believe what happened to me he's like yes we made it let's have a party let's rejoice let's be happy it is so good to know God 
You know, when we worship, Job would stand in the front row probably, raise his hands like Josh. You know, Josh's like, we got to get more people to raise their hands. I'm like, yeah, it's the rock. Middle section, they, we're lucky if they sing. Honestly, you know, I stood in the back one time in the middle section. They're just like this. Oh, this is really good music, Pastor. I go, you sing? No, not really. I do love God, but Job would be in the front row going, I don't care. I love my God. He's blessed me. I made it through the roughest time of my life. And I'm on the second, my second half. 